Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where we teach you all about airbrushing miniatures from start to finish and having a great time doing it because airbrushes are amazing and they save you tons of time and produce cool effects. And this is part 43 where I'm going to show you how to paint an MDF crate in a very, very different fashion than I did the previous crate. I think you'll like this one. Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where we teach you all about painting with an airbrush and having a great time doing it. Airbrushes are amazing and they save you a lot of time. And today we're going to be painting an MDF uh, crate. It's a really cool crate that I was just asked to paint for a friend and it's going to be cool. I'll do like a, uh, a glowing red internal and just gray external. So as always I'll be using my Badger Patriot 105 in combination with my Sotar 2020. And as always, use gloves, use a mask, protect yourself, protect your lungs, and have a great time doing it. So let's go ahead and get started on this week's Airbrush 101. Alright, so as I mentioned my miniature painting 101, I started with the entire uh, piece of MDF train primed black with Steinorez primer, and of course it was pre-sealed with some varnish as well. That way it's nice and solid and it doesn't absorb too much of the paint. As you see, this thing, this MDF is very thirsty and will drink it in quickly, with, especially with an airbrush if you don't uh, seal it ahead of time. So I started off, I'm, we'll be using, by the way, I should mention that I'm using uh, Minotaur paints. I start off with a dark red, um, equivalent to like Mephiston red, which is Regal red. The reason why I decided to use Minotaur paints for this is just it's easy and they're pretty thin and that's good to go. And of course I'm using my Badger Patriot 105 for this tutorial and I decided it'd be kind of fun to just use my Patriot 105 for once instead of relying on my Sotar 2020. So I started off by just priming in all the areas, or sorry, painting all the areas with Regal Red and I intentionally put the piece back together because I'm going to paint all the gaps in the, the plating essentially with for this crate uh, with this Regal Red. So I'm going to leave intentionally a black around the very edges of these areas and focus on the center areas with Regal Red, as you can see here. So just leave a little black around the edges and then just cut it all in with Regal Red and it will dry darker. As you see, it's, it starts dark darkening instantly pretty much on this thing. As you see, when it dries, it dries significantly darker and gets absorbed into the black. So at the beginning, it looks a little bit uh, extreme, but it quickly blends in. And then I repeat this process with Angelic Red, which is a lighter red from Minotaur. And once again, I focus more central, leaving the areas you know, darker than you see. And once again, it starts uh, being a little abrasive at the beginning, but then uh, dries significantly darker, focusing the center parts of the uh, containment crate. Now, the, the thing is, I did intentionally leave the top part of this crate um, unattached, so that way I could take out the center piece, as you're gonna see later. So I can be a little sloppy. Uh, the key is just to get a nice thin line with your Badger Peter 105, just get close to the miniature and control the spray. But of course, if you go over like I'm doing right now, it's not gonna have really any effect on the, uh, the paint job in the end. In fact, if you have a little bit on the inside, it just creates a little bit of a glowing effect. Um, it goes along with it quite well. So as you can see, the top part is off. And I'm gonna intentionally do is, for this back part, I want it to reverse it and have a cool effect. So I'm going to create the diamond on the one side, and then I'm going to reverse the sides later so it has the diamond on the front and then the kind of the reverse of the diamond on the back. So I was trying to picture what the reverse would be on the front end and just paint a, like a very central brightness um, on the front of the crate. So as you can see, I'm just painting up all the uh, inside parts and then repeating this process, I had some bile, so, uh, bile's a yellow. I just wanted to, I had a, bit of angelic red still left in my airbrush so I figured I might as well add file and I kept going with my Sotar 2020, no, sorry, Sotar 2020 with my Badger Peter 105 once again focusing more central and this is just becoming a brighter and brighter color because bile is a, is a yellow it's a medium tone yellow so it's, I'm creating more, closer and closer to an orange focusing more central with each area just cutting it all in and then uh, just repeating this process you can see each step going just a little more central than the previous one and away from the edges creating a nice like glowing redness on the inside of it You see, I can potentially go uh, outside the lines because of the, um, the fact that I, and it, it saves you a lot of time. I don't need to cut anything in because it's separate. So once again, one more time, adding a little more bile and then repeating this process so it's a bright, uh, it's a much brighter red. It's almost an orange at this point, going very central. With this, and that's all the colors I need right now for the, uh, the reds. And then I'm going to take off the top and then um, 
take out the inside of it and just paint the outside with gray. And it, actually, it's qu a really nice and quick paint job, as you can see. But it's it's a nice piece of terrain, and it will just um, it's just for the tabletop. You know, it'll look good in videos, and it's a decent quality for the amount of time we're spending. And this is what I really love about this MDF. You can just be careful, obviously, with MDF. Watch where you're stepping; it's a bit fragile. If you break it, just glue it back together. And as you see, I'm doing the same thing on the top. Just making sure it's all nice and bright on the inside by just adding a little a file at a time and just brighter and brighter colors and repeating the process more inward and you can go as much as you want to with the effect that you want. And then I took out the inside. Here's what the crate looks like when it's it's the part isn't on the inside. And now I can just use rock from uh, Minotaur. And look at that. It covers up the red with ease. So I'm just doing a nice even brush pattern, uh, dusting pattern over the entire crate and covering up that red. And if you leave a little bit around on the inside, like I'm intentionally doing, it just creates a bit of a glowing effect on the inside of the crate. And then for the doors, I guess I tried to leave a little bit of shadowing on the inside and just focus on the more external areas of it. And I intentionally left the bottom of the crate uh, black. As you see, not a hard thing to cover up at all. And you saved a lot of time by just doing the effect with it. You didn't have to, to mark off anything by being able to remove the center part. It saves you a whole lot of time. Don't need to mask off anything. And just quickly clean it all up. That's it. And then I, uh, after that was done, I took the next color and uh, just repeat this process with a bit of dusting as well. I actually painted the, the bottom part black after. And then I took some dusty ground, which is just a uh, lighter gray. It's much more whiter gray, and just create a bit of a dusted pattern on this, focusing more at a 45 degree angle, hitting the top part of the crate. Um, as well as I did intentionally put the top part of the crate part back on, um, just to make sure that it's all consistent, hitting up a 45 degree angle, focusing and just creating a dusted, older, worn out effect on the crate and uh, with my, my dusty ground. So I did this entire tutorial with my Badger Patriot 105. Of course, make sure just between coats, give it a nice, you know, blast some cleaner through it, make sure it's all nice and clean. Um, don't want to clog up your airbrush and that's the great thing about these miniature paints is that they go on directly from the paint pot into the airbrush and they're good they are so thin you know they they, uh, they don't really ever clog I find here we go I'm just dusting with my dusty ground all over the piece and that's it I essentially then just put the pieces back together uh, you could take a, a dry brush if you want to create it just you know go over it with a light dry brush as well just create a bit of a texture right now I'm just dusting it focusing on the areas that are really exposed and from a 40 degree angle hitting the top part of the crate to create a bit of a gradient and when you put the pieces back together here is what the piece looks like when it's completely put together and as you can see I really like the double diamond on one on the front one on the back I just wanted the thought to be kind of cool and there's a bit of a glowing effect on the inside which you see a little bit of the red around the gray. The gray was easily able to be uh, fixed up and cleaned up quite easily with this airbrush and didn't take very long at all. So I really hope you enjoyed this uh, quick effect and it didn't take very long and it's gonna, and uh, it's a nice looking piece of terrain made with MDF, yes. So there you have it everyone. In the end, it didn't take very long. It was a lot of fun to do and it was pretty simple. As you can see, with working with the MDF isn't too bad and airbrushing saves you a lot of time, produces a great effect and uh, it was fun, as I said, it turned out well, based on the amount of time I spent on it. Really cool stuff, and it's looking, it's gonna look great on the tabletop. So thank you as always for subscribing to the world. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more Airbrush 101s, and leave comments in the comment section down below what you want to see in future videos. I'll do my best to make sure every suggestion happens. So stay tuned, like this is Jay saying happy painting. Your airbrush.